Hi everybody, thank you for watching Sandra's Art Studio. Today we are going to make some bees in the form of hair clips and we are going to start with gathering some materials. Here I have an empty egg carton which I use for mixing my acrylic paints. I also have some metallic paints, some puffy paints, uh, gesso which is a type of primer that I use on many of my projects scissors, tweezers, super glue, nail file, chopsticks, and some wood beads, wood octagons, which I found on Amazon, paint brushes, gloves, and nail clippers for dogs, which we will be using for cutting chopsticks. I start by painting the octagons with gesso, and while that is drying, I will bring my sticks and my beads to the bench grinder and we'll polish the ends of each one of the sticks. One end has to be kind of pointy and the other end has to be blunt. Um, the end that is blunt is going into the biggest bead. So right there I am figuring out how I'm going to put this bead without damaging it into the vice grips. So I, you know, you can get like a little pad, a little cloth or something, because if you just squeeze it with the vice grips, you're gonna damage the bead, you're gonna leave the marks. So the vice grips are good for holding the bead, because if you, I mean, unless you have something else, but I have a small Dremel and I like it because it's not really a dangerous tool or anything. I've slipped plenty of times and nothing has happened because it's not a very powerful or heavy tool. So, but you still want to be careful. So I grab it with the vice grips and here I am drilling the hole that I need to put the stick into this part of the body of the bee. Next I have eight identical beads with holes and I'm going to take half of those beads and grind one side of it because that is where the wings are going to land and I also um, continue to polish my sticks and make sure that uh, the sticks are going to fit perfectly into the holes that I have made for the bee's body. So keep in mind that these beads are rounded right and you want to have the side of the bee's butt that's going to connect to the bee's torso a little flattened so there's more surface to connect when i apply the torso bead that has a stick in between the torso and the head bead i'm placing a stick in there so that way when i super glue it to the body is going to actually attach much better right because it has more surface to be glued to so i'm just getting ready with all my beads and all my little sticks to glue them to the body um, but just wanted to point out that i do flatten out the the part of the bee's butt that attaches to the torso so i flatten that out so there's uh, enough surface to glue together Alrighty, so once I have all of that glued together, I'm ready to paint all of my bees. And also make sure that you check the strength. You know, when I'm getting ready to paint, I like to try to break them in half and make sure that uh, the bee's body is strong enough to get a little abuse. Uh, because nothing worse than, you know, trying, placing something on your hair and then uh, it breaks on you. So I just don't want that to happen. So always make sure that the strength is there. So I, I do like try to break them. And if, if it breaks, I'd rather have it break in my hand instead of in somebody's, uh, you know, when somebody's wearing it or if I'm wearing it. All right. So make sure everything is nice and tidy. I don't attach the stick to the body yet because I want to keep the stick clean from paint. So I just paint the body. I start with the primer, the gesso, and I paint the bodies and then I paint each one of the bees, whatever color I'm going to. In this case, I'm trying different colors just to show you guys 
what it looks like with different colors. I know bees generally are yellow and black or brownish, but I like playing with different color combinations. Also, I like to mention that if you don't paint it with white, some kind of primer first, then wood has a tendency of absorbing color and your bees are probably going to be a little dull. Now that can be a look that you do want to achieve. So, you know, if you want to go for the dull, then don't paint the primer. Like I said, the wood will actually absorb a lot of the paint. Okay, once it's all primed, I will paint everything with the base color and sometimes I have to give it a couple of uh, coats and that's okay. And then I come back with the color that I want. In this case, I'm using all these different metallic colors. I just got this set. It was not very expensive and I got it from the local craft store. Okay, so here I'm using my um, empty egg carton. I Before I throw it into the recycling bin, I use these egg cartons a lot for my painting projects. I find them very versatile, very handy, and I don't have to clean after I'm done. I can just throw it right into a recycling bin. All right, once I'm done with priming, I am ready for color. Now, I don't have, let's say, a light pink and a dark pink or a light green and a dark green. So what I end up doing is either mixing my metallics with a little bit of white or painting, um, let's say, the stripes with white and then coming back and uh, going over them with the metallic. Or sometimes I'll mix a little bit of black or brown into colors like, let's say, red or gold and when it comes to colors like pinks and blues I like to deepen those colors if I am going to do that with like a deep blue or a deep purple but don't mix it with black it looks horrible in my opinion anyway it's all about experimenting with different colors and applications and hopefully you guys will show me what you've done I love to see them and uh, if you have questions, of course, leave them on the comments and I'll be happy to answer. Also want to let you guys know that what I make on these videos end up on my online store. It's www.artisticsandra.com. If you don't see it, you can always leave a message if you are interested. Just letting you know that. Okay, so this little green guy here, I ended up mixing the metallic green with a little bit of white. I wasn't too happy about the entire body looking uh, kind of pale. So I ended up painting the midsection and the head with uh, the darker and deeper green, which is actually more like in the pure form, right? And uh, also, as far as like the brushes, how to get those little hair strokes, I use an older brush and a lot of times I'll go ahead and tap the tip and get it a little dry so it so the brush gets a little discombobulated and that makes the perfect little brush for doing these little hairs. And on the next bee you're going to see how I take the brown body and do the white little strokes which are the hairs and once that dries I cover the entire B with gold and just to let you know most acrylics will be translucent when it comes to the metallics I should say most metallic colors are translucent so you can actually do this type of application on just about everything when it comes to metallics you know do your black and white and then cover the entire thing with metallic and and that makes a nice effect because you'll see the contrast.
So when it comes to doing the wings, I think it's best to just practice on a plain piece of paper a few times. And then you can go ahead and freehand it, you know, just wing it. <laughs> Okay, so when it comes to applying the eyes, I have my paintbrush wet, just water, plain water, and that's how I pick up these gems. If I have gel, um, sometimes it can't touch like the back of the gem, and I'm not really sure how that's going to react in the long run with the super glue. So I'd rather have just water because I know the water is going to evaporate. It's not soaking wet or anything like that. And also, I apply the super glue on the side of my workspace just a drop and I pick up with the other end of my paintbrush I pick up just a fraction of that drop and apply it to the head of the bee because if you apply too much when you press the eye and some of that super glue rolls out from underneath some of the super glues will actually dry crusty and that's not a look you want you'll spend more time just scraping it off if if it bothers you so heads up on that and now some puffy paint to cover the ugly mouth. <laughs> We're gonna make it cute. So the puffy paint is just a little squirt of it and it will form that little peak shape and just let it dry. The next day you'll see if you need to apply it again because sometimes they do flatten out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and remember you can always watch other videos on how I made uh, like the pineapple hair clips or the flamingo hair clips, etc. So I will be posting every Sunday and I hope you guys keep watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. And here are the results of the little cute bees that we did. All right. Thank you for watching. Bye. with the same color as